Hello, my soccer universe. Yeah, the Super Bowl was pretty much uh, the most boring American football game I've seen in a long time. So I'm not gonna lose much thought. Um, yeah, I'm not wearing a jersey now. Rain hell. Uh, actually, I wanna actually spend this video now to talk a little bit about the um, leagues outside of the top four, mostly League 1. Uh, French League, which unfortunately I have been a little bit putting aside as of late. Um, but also want to look at Portugal, Netherlands, Belgium, you know, Scotland maybe. We have to see what comes up. Uh, just where, where there are some big name teams that we are barely talking about. Yeah, so it uh, might be interesting just to have a brief look of how things are there. But let's get at league. Uh, I saw the highlights of Lyon against PSG, and this was an absolutely gorgeous game. So many, many, many chances on each side. I mean, Lyon basically dominated after PSG took the lead. And then once Lyon took the lead, PSG had chances and couldn't make them. And yeah, we have Lyon winning 2-1 against PSG, which makes everything a little bit more interesting. I'm just gonna rattle through the results of uh, this round now. And again, there's a this, the Saint Etienne Strasbourg uh, one was postponed. But yeah, Lille Nice uh, 4 0. Nice is not doing too well, and Lille uh, is staying in the hunt uh, for the runner up spot. Angers Dijon 1 0. We're gonna see. Monaco actually wins. And don't get me started Monaco. First they fire coach, then they get Henri to fire him to get the new coach in. That's absolutely uh, stupid in my regard. So yeah, Monaco is its own story and we're gonna see in a bit where there's in, in, in the standings. I think they're still in deep trouble. Rennes against Amiens. That's two cities that I actually liked when I visited. Uh, one nil for Rennes. Reims against Marseille. Reims for me is the biggest thing that they are back in the uh, league. This is a team that should be there. They have made two European Cup finals in the 50s. That's an absolute um, biggie in French soccer. And France is for me the one league where I always think that the teams from the past are different ones than the current great teams. I'm thinking uh, Racing Paris. I, I I think, of course, uh, start the run. Um, and I think other teams surely will pop up. Uh, anyone remember us there? There, no. They, they, they're no, nowhere to be found now. So Reims beats Marseille 2-1. Marseille is actually also in trouble, as we will see. Nîmes Montpellier, uh, it's a 1-1. That uh, Southern French duel, I said, uh, saint Etienne Strasbourg was postponed. Uh, Olympique Lyon, Paris Saint-Germain, this was really a wonderful game, 2-1, um, those, I, I don't know, the standings say different, but I always have to think that Lyon at the moment is the second best French team, they played well in the Champions League, and I think they could give Barcelona a uh, uh, little bit of trouble, still think that Barcelona will quite easily qualify, but yeah. Uh, it, we have a few Tuma games coming up, uh, in a few weeks, a car against Nantes and Bordeaux against Gangor to round out that uh, round. And this is a way, this, this is a reason why I kind of lost France a little bit. Not only did they, um, how to say, <sighs> there were so many good matches now in the other three uh, Spain, England, and Italy. And also in Germany, even now, when they kick, kick, kick it up, up again, that Ligue 1 a little bit fell by the wayside. Um, I will do my best to get, get begin there, but I, because I actually like the French League. Um, it is not, you know, you don't have the glamour guys in there, except at PSG. But there is some decent soccer to be pl uh, played there. So at the moment, we have Paris Saint-Germain in first place with only a 10-point lead. But, listen, 56 points, 21 games played. This was now round 23. Lille and Olympique Lyon have both 23 games played and they have 46 and 43 points. So, um... 
Assuming that Paris Saint-Germain will win the other two games, they would have a 16-point cushion. Uh, there is no way that PSG is not going to win this league again. But this place for uh, number two and three, and you know, only two um, secures your uh, Champions League spot. Number three is uh, qualification spot to the Champions League. So that's a battle between Lille and Lyon. Uh, that um, we gotta watch out, and I'm actually looking forward. Maybe there will be a little Lyon game soon. Saint Etienne is a little bit dropping off, but they have also a game in hand uh, at the moment. They are with 37 points. Uh, they could go to 40, so within three points of both Lyon and Lille. Montpellier is slowly climbing, also a game in hand at 36. Strasbourg has a pretty darn good season, actually 35 points, also a game back. And then yeah, Reims 34, uh, Nice. 34 uh, in 7th and 8th, Rennes 33, and then we get to Marseille. Uh, to me, it's amazing how far Marseille have fallen. Again, Reims, Nice, and Rennes have each 23 games. Marseille has a game in hand, so they could be equal with Reims and Nice um, in that regard. Nîmes, a promoted team, also 30 points. Bordeaux, only 28, but also two games in hand. And, you know, I hate it. There, there should be a table that kind of takes this into account. I always think, make average points, um, you know, make percentages. I think this would, um, wasn't the NBA having percentages, also, also the NFL, uh, which makes a whole lot more sense to me. Um, give how many points they achieved out of possible points. I know it's with three, three points, it's not uh, that easy, but I think it would make more sense to do it that way, especially if you have such a uh, disbalanced uh, table. As France has at the moment, I remember that the Premier League and especially the Dutch League used to be like that. Used to be. I think the Premier League got a lot, lot, lot better. I'm not sure about the Dutch League anymore. And then, you know, we are slowly getting into the relegation zone, although the, it, there is a clear drop. I mean, Bordeaux 28. Angers 27 with 23 games, Toulouse 23 games, 26 points, Nantes 22 with 20, 22 games with 24 uh, points, and that's kind of the bottom level of this kind of very deep midfield. And then I think the next five are the ones that fight for relegation against relegation. That is Dijon with 20 points and 22 games, uh, Caen with 22 games and 18 points, Monaco 23 games and 18 points. So, you know, Monaco is not a um, relegation playoff spot. Amiens 23 games, 18 points, and Gagan, unfortunately, 22 and 14. Yeah, I would love to see Gagan in there, but I am afraid that they won't hold it. Uh, similar to Amiens, <sighs> you know. I would hate to see that car goes down. I think that Monaco probably will get something going and uh, get the spot so that, yeah, it will be Dijon. Car, one of those will make, will, 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 will probably go in the playoff. I I would hate to see it. As, as I said, I, I uh, when you saw my league uh, jersey review, I have some slight uh preferences to the northern french uh, towns because they are quite some nice towns so that's how it stands in france and um, you know they are surely count on uh it's a relegation battle but uh interesting bordeaux going on also kind of those are the outstanding will 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 get there let's see other leagues um we talked yesterday a little bit about greece where uh Pauk after a long drought, I think since 1984, 1986, might get, um, might become champions again. They have been vice champions uh, last, last time, time, time around, and at the moment, they look pretty good. Um, it is 19 games played, the league has 15, so this is 13, so uh, 11 games to go. Uh, but they played a big game against Ajax this uh, weekend where they played 1-1. Now the next one is Olympiakos and this kind of will more or less looks like a title decider or, or, or already because you know then there are not too many games. Of course you can always drop a few here, here and there but if you look at the moment 51 points for Pauk, 45 for Olympiakos, 37 for Ajax. And then it's Atromitos 33, Aris 29, Panathinaikos, Panathinaikos. 28 and uh, there you go so it looks quite good there let's go to some other leagues I think um, just quick looks at especially the top um, 
in the list here of Belgium next. Let's see, I have not checked on Belgium in a long time. At the moment we have Henk with 54 points out of 24 games ahead of Brugge. 24, 40, 45 and then Royal Antwerp uh, 45 points, uh, Standard de Liege 43. Those are the top four. Um, we know of course the top spot gets a fixed spot in the Champions League, second gets a playoff spot and 34th get into Europa League. Um, and those four kind of, you know, it's Henk really far ahead. Then the other three, uh, Bruges, Ant Antwerp and Liege, uh, kind of together, 45, 45, 4, 43. And then there's already a little bit of a drop. St. Troiden could get in there, Gent could get in there, Anderlecht could get in there. But, you know, I have my doubts about that. I think... Don't know if Bel Belgium had, had a very weird championship system. I'm not sure if they will change it now. There was something of the type that there will be playoffs. I mean, you would have 30 games. I think there will be something like that, but I'm not 100% sure there. there. Unfortunately, I don't follow um, the Belgian league too closely. Just uh, some. There was a, a standard delay against Anderlecht 2-1 uh, at the weekend and Brugge against Gent 1-1. That seems to be two standard results there. Uh, let's go a little bit further. The Netherlands. That was actually one I was looking at next. Um, it's it's a very weird league. We have everyone at 20 games now, and it's pretty straightforward. It's an 18 uh, team league. Eindhoven leads with 55 points, uh, 18 wins, one draw, and one loss. Ajax 50 points. Five points behind with 16 wins, two draws and two losses. And they had now just two draws and two, two losses. Their two losses came against Feyenoord and Eindhoven and were really, really bad losses to them. Um, if you look at the goal differential, Eindhoven is 69-11, 11, uh, Ajax is 72-18. And yeah, uh, six goals they gave up to Feyenoord at the weekend. So uh, Feyenoord is a little bit out of it. Um, Already, they had 39 points. Uh, when I look at this weekend, you know, <laughs> it reminds me a lot about Spain. Ajax, uh, Venlo, 6 0, uh, and Eindhoven, 5 0 against Sittard. Um, Feyenoord actually lost the, <laughs> to their arrival, Excelsior Rotterdam. You come off to win against Ajax, and, and, and then you pull out that. This is how you're not going, 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 going to go anywhere. So the big three in Holland are again on top. Alkmaar is then with 34 points, Vitesse 30, Utrecht 29 and uh, VVV Venlo uh, 26 uh, together with Heracles Almelo and Willem uh, Twe Tilburg is at 25, Zwolle 24, Den Haag 24, Sita 23, Hanwein 22, uh, Excel 22. You know, that it, it's kind of... Uh, I have the feeling that everyone below uh, Alkmaar, it's very dense. Alkmaar, Alkmaar in fourth spot has uh, 34 points. In fifth spot, Vitesse, 30 points. And Emmen in 16th, which is the first uh, relegation playoff spot, has only 21 points. So this is nine points differential. It's very, very tight. I think there can, a lot can happen. At the moment, I mean, uh, Breda looks to be the one that going down. The Graf Sarshap is 18. Yeah, we'll see. Honingen is also hanging in there. So, yeah, that's the Dutch league. Um, Portugal. That's one that I uh, hear here and there watch. There was a big game. Uh, the Lisbon Derby Sporting and Benfica. When I saw it, it was 4 1, and then Sporting got a penalty. It ended 2 4. Uh, Let's quickly see how it went. It was 2-1 Benfica at the half time. Benfica had a 2-0 lead, made it a 4-1 lead, and then, yeah, uh, Sporting 1-2 at half time and 2-4. So they always two goals, Benfica, one goal. Um, Sporting Porto actually played only 0-0 uh, against Guimaraes, but Porto leads um, 20 games played, 50 points, Porto is ahead. Benfica, 47, they would be in the Champions League uh, playoff. Braga, 46 points, is right behind, and Sporting is kind of draw, dropping off already, 39, but still, uh, fourth spot is the last one that gets an Europa League spot, and then it's Vitoria Guimaraes at 32, this is where it kind of drops off. Morarense, Belenense, Sportimonense, you know, it gets then very, very thin. Um, I see Boavista 
is in deep trouble. They just got out of the relegation at 19 points. They're 15th. Desportivo Aves uh, is 18. So that doesn't uh, look good. I, re- re- I mean, I have been following at, at one point the Portuguese league, but there are some teams that I don't really recommend. More Renze is one more. Portimonense, Portimonense, Santa Clara, Tondela. Those are all teams. Ferenc is the last place team. Those are all teams that I honestly would not have heard about before. So yeah, let's look Scotland. It's kind of the last league that I want to look at, uh, and, my, and mainly because Scotland has that big two uh, that everyone's talking about. Celtic leads the league again, clearly 54 points, 24 uh, games played. Uh, Rangers. Uh, second with 48 points, and then it is Aberdeen tw- uh, with 46. Kilmarnock with 45 is the first one outside of the Europa League spots. Uh, and then Hearts of Midlothian is 42. And yeah, it's a smallish league with 12 uh, games. So yeah, uh, what is kind of, I don't know, amazing is the wrong word, but uh, both Celtic and Rangers already have four losses, which is a little bit unusual. Which kind of tells me also that you know they dominated the league and they in uh, in Europe they're not doing anything. I always remember Barcelona against Celtic. Celtic was usually uh, thrashing, which yeah is kind of sad. Uh, shall we look at Denmark? Let's look at Denmark as well, and then we have have <laughs> because I sometimes see Denmark. Who is leading Denmark? Copenhagen, uh, forty-seven. Three points out of mid Jylland, 44, Brent B30 is already out of the conversation. It's only the top two uh, that get spots. So, yeah, uh, interesting to look at. Um, so that was my quick tour through Europe. Uh, leagues that are playing currently and that have, uh, you know, that you see some, some the Europa League, uh, uh, some teams doing something. So I thought it might be interesting to do that. Well... Let me know what you think about all these leagues and which leagues I should maybe look into a little bit more. You know, it's really hard for me to concentrate outside of the top four or five. I mean, you see already France a little bit draw dropping off. I follow Austria, but I know that uh, very little of you are interested about Austria. So what should I do? Uh, I will not talk much about it, except when my dear Lusk is really uh, getting in the Champions League qualification spot, as it looks like. And with the new uh, league rule, with some luck... Some lots of luck. The Eva Championship is not out of the question because um, we have now 12 teams. After everyone plays, there's a championship playoff with six teams and the points are halved. So the distance to Salzburg will shorten and then it's a kind of a sprint to the finish. I still would think so. Salzburg is the king favorite. Okay, anyway, drop me some comments to below what you thought about uh, my thoughts here, especially if you're from one of the countries where I'm talking about. Let me know what you. Uh, if you can add something to what I've been saying, give me a thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.